Hi, Len here. Welcome to another episode. Let's talk about bracing. You may recall at the end of last week's episode, we had an issue with one of our bracing units. I'll show you how bracing units work and why we had an issue with this particular one. So here is a wall that I've prepared earlier. As you can see, it doesn't offer a lot of resistance. So if wind tries to blow it or an earthquake tries to move it, it's just going to move around or tip over. It's no good. So the first part of a bracing unit is fixing your frame down to the ground. Now all frames are fixed down to the ground in some capacity, but for bracing units, in addition to your normal fixing, they must be fixed down at the ends with usually handy bracks. These aren't handy bracks, but they show the same principle. So that's the first part of our bracing unit frame is fixed down to the ground, but also it's fixed to these studs, so the bottom of these studs cannot move now. But, I can still move this. Usually in New Zealand we use plasterboard of some variety, but the engineer will sometimes specify plywood, especially on your external walls. Now if you're going to use jib as a bracing unit, there's a specific screw pattern that needs to be used. I don't have room on this one, but I'll do the best I can. Alright, there we have it. That's our screw pattern, roughly. Let's see if I can move it now. That's not moving. Get a sledgehammer. All right, ten pounds of barco goodness. And that's not bad for a tiny little bracing wall versus a ten pound sledgehammer. Now the issue we had at Prebleton was that the engineer had designed a bracing unit on a freestanding wall. So it wasn't attached to the rest of the house, which means it wasn't bracing the rest of the house. So he's come back to us on Friday with a solution, which I will implement now. So this is our bracing plan, and this is the wall in question, BL1, so that's brace line. And as you can see, it's not tied to any of the other walls. Alrighty, my first step is to get rid of this insulation so I don't get it all over me. I really wish I'd bought my mask. Let's go with 1400, eh? We're getting to the stage of the build where there's not that much timber left, so I'm having to hunt around a bit for it. There's a bit outside, but unfortunately, it's pretty wet. I'm going to use some of this roof plane brace and it's basically the same as the straps would use, it's just a big roll. So what we want is the strap that holds this down to come down onto the stud which is then fixed down to the ground. So I'm going to just, I might get away with not moving this, we'll see how it goes. Now this perimeter channel is nailed on don't want to completely take it off, but I just want to make sure I've got enough gap to get that strap through. That should do it. Not easy. practice with these kinds of fixings to 
chisel them in so that they don't stick out and especially for a kitchen you don't really want to bulge in the wall so I'm just going to spend a minute or so just making a little bit of space there. Previously I've used a uh, tech screw for this, well, we've got these blue screws here anyway, so I'll try this. That's pulled pretty tight. Oops. Alright, so for this side, a strap won't work because if you have your strap going over, it can't then go over this and attach to the studs. So what I'm doing here is using these instead to fix down to the top plate. And since this is a load bearing wall, there will be a stud lock screw that goes from the top plate down into the stud anyway. There is the head of the stud lock screw which goes down Ooh, what is it? 80 mil into the stud. I need to do this a wee bit blind, but it shouldn't be too bad. That was that was heaps easier than doing the other side. Uh, that took me like I don't know five minutes as opposed to. 40 something for that side and now I just need to do the other end of this wall I think the engineer will be happy with that. Now the bracing plan shows this bracing unit at 1.45 long and it goes to the end of the doorway which looks correct except there's a plate join just before that. So the inspectors asked us to move this handy brack to the stud next to it. I might need a battery for that eh? I need a ratchet for that one. It's a pretty big bolt. So this is the handy brick here, it's got these curved bits which make it a lot stronger and it's thicker than the CPC-80 and you can see CPC-80 is actually bent from when I was hitting that model with a sledgehammer
We've also had the uh, issue with the penetration for the attic stairs in the ceiling diaphragm. So the plans say oh, over here, ceiling diaphragm to 3604. Um, now you look in 3604 and there's not a lot of detail. It basically says no cutouts and protrusions are okay. And it doesn't really go into any more detail. However, you look at the jib guidelines, it says if you need a penetration in your ceiling diaphragm, it must be in the centre third. Basically none of us knew that and we put it in the wrong place. That's alright, it's all fixed now, I've just got to put a wee bit of blocking around it. You may have noticed in last week's episode there was a new guy. That's James, he's our regional site manager. So he's uh, basically managing our jobs down here with the boss, uh, Chris, having moved down to Wanaka earlier in the year for, well, there's a lot more work down there. Uh, hence, I was down there a couple of weeks back for work. Uh, so James is Managing, managing a lot of stuff here which takes a lot of pressure off Cam so he can concentrate on teaching me and being a chippy rather than having to manage all the fine details and emailing and you know all that stuff so it takes a lot of pressure off him and it's also given him a chance to actually have a break so he's away for a couple of weeks and hopefully I think two weeks he's going to be back um, hopefully he has a good break and comes back refreshed all right, and uh, it's a good time to wrap up this episode. So we've got all that bracing sorted, and jib is going on very soon. And, yeah, I'll catch you guys next week. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and all that stuff. Have a great week. Cheers. I'm going to use some of this roof paint. <laughs> so this is our bracing plan, and it's us turn the right way, shall we? Uh, what do you call them? Thingamajiggies are okay.